with the increase in forecast accuracy and the uh, service system, uh, there is need to invest more. It becomes a tendency to attribute everything to climate change, uh, but that does not that is does not seem to be correct. Uh, yes, you are right actually. Uh, we are lucky uh, to some extent that the temperature rise because of the climate change, if you just look at, uh, it is quite high in the polar regions and the extratropical regions. In the tropical regions, in land surface, if you just look at, it is relatively less. Consider India as a whole, it is 0 0.64 degrees Celsius per 100 years um, uh, rise in temperature, annual temperature. Mm. Whereas uh, in the globe, it is 1.2 degrees Celsius yeah. in 100 years. Mm. So by that sense, uh, uh, it is slower in Indian region. Mm. But I will tell you, Indian region is a tropical country. Mm. In a tropical country, there are two types of uh, temperatures which impacts uh, in terms of heat wave and cold wave. Mm. So one is that uh, the seasonal variation arises. If I look at the rising temperature is uh, maximum in winter season, January, February, followed by the post monsoon season, October to December. Mm. And, um, uh, least is the monsoon season. Mm. Now, if I look at, um, but still there is a rising trend in both pre-monsoon season, there is summer season and monsoon season. But if I look at the trend in terms of maximum temperature and minimum temperature, the rise in maximum temperature is maximum. Yeah. The trend of rise in maximum temperature over country mm. is about 1 degree Celsius. Oh. Yes. Mm. Whereas the trend of rise in minimum temperature is about 0 0.26 degrees Celsius. Okay. So as a result, you get minimum average temperature rising yeah. at the rate of 0 0.64 degrees Celsius in 100 years. Right. So therefore, the whatever is the rise, its impact will be more felt in terms of the heat waves, hmm. Hmm. its frequency, duration, hmm. and intensity. Hmm. And in terms of minimum temperature, since it is only 0 0.26 degrees Celsius rise, Therefore, its impact is not so high as compared to the maximum temperature. Therefore, right. there are decrease in cold wave conditions, mm -hmm. but not uh, so dramatically as compared to increase in heat wave conditions. When I talk about, say, uh, 20 years back, budget was around, say, 20 crores or so for India Metrological Department. But now the budget is around 500 crores. So um, that includes many things, of course, but at least annual budget uh, for all developmental activities is around 250 crores. But uh, the budget for IMD uh, should not be considered um, as uh, isolated place. <coughs> the budget of Minister of Arts Sciences uh, should be considered is around 1,000 crores. And out of this 1,000 crores, major amount goes for the atmospheric sciences. That means Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology, National Center for Middle and Weather Forecasting, and the Indian Meteorological Department. So taken together, uh, there has been increased budget in the recent time, uh, but still I will tell you, uh, there is uh, the demand, which is the supply, if you just look at, with the increase in forecast accuracy and the uh, service system, uh, there is need to invest more, invest more. And this investment uh, can be from various approaches. <laughs> One can be direct investment, another one can be the investment associated with the other scientific agencies in the country, and third one can be investment in association with um, um, our state governments. So one of the most important collaborations, for example, the launching of the satellites, uh, they are nowadays uh, IMD or Ministry of Arts Sciences is paying to Indian space organizations. There is also investment with the OceanSat 3, what we launched, the InSat 3DS is coming up, so that is also investment. And then similarly, the AWS ARG, which is being put up by the state governments, that is also investment by them. So there has been increased investment, what I want to say, uh, by the various uh, agencies. That is not taken together when I say. But I'll still say it is worth investing because about 5% of GDP is lost because of the disasters. So if I uh, find out uh, whether it's a gain by the investment, Actually, I was leading as project director for weather forecasting in the modernization project of IMD. It was taken up during 20, 2007 to 2009. And what you see today, so that was the beginning of the time, we went from analog to digital system. We went for improving our observational, then modeling and forecasting, early warning system and disseminations. 
and that improved the image of IMD, also forecast accuracy of IMD, and that process is continuing now. So they are actually uh, total uh, um, budget was 900 crores, but uh, at that time IMD spent 437 crores. And if I just look at one cyclone, the amount which is saved in terms of the ex gratia to the, the amount of people which are saved, you cannot imagine. Thousands of crores is saved with the correct forecast of the tropical, one tropical cyclones, and usually two to three cyclones across the coast. So therefore, there is uh, a calculation. If you spend one rupee, you may get 1,000 rupee as a return in the disaster management. Actually, uh, it becomes a tendency to attribute everything to climate change, uh, but that does not that is does not seem to be correct. Uh, there are a detection. There could be detection. If detection is uh, different from the normal behavior, then you can say that yes, it is a detection first. Now, once you have detected, for example, we have detected that there is a rise in temperature. So we have to prove that this rise in temperature is because of the rise in greenhouse gases. Then we should find out whether this greenhouse gas is carbon dioxide or it is methane or something else. So that type of attribution studies are very limited. Especially in the Indian scenario, I will tell you, attribution studies are very much limited. There has been some kind of attribution study with respect to the heavy rainfall. Right? And we found that, yes, uh, it may be because of this increase in greenhouse gases, it is rising temperature and hence the frequency and intensity of heavy rainfall is increasing. But with respect to the attribution study, for example, thunderstorms. So basically, as the principle goes, yes, thunderstorm frequency should increase and uh, lightning frequency should increase. But lightning frequency does not increase everywhere or thunderstorm frequency does not increase everywhere. So whatever increase is there, is it because of the greenhouse gases? So that type of studies are very limited. Similarly, if I just look at the cyclones also. I was a member of this um, uh, committee, international committee, to find out uh, this fact what you asked. So finally, we could not decide whether it is because of X or because of Y. And um, then we decided that with whatever facts are established so far from the research uh, community, we analyzed and everybody is asked to uh, give a voting. <laughs> okay. You say whether you agree that increase in intensity of the tropical cyclones or Arabian Sea since 1990 is because of the greenhouse gases, or is because of the climate change. So finally, like that, we went for whether the intensity of the cyclone for Pacific Ocean is increasing because of this one. So finally found that, yes, uh, uh, certain facts could be attributed, but certain facts could not be attributed. For example, this um, increase in intensity of the cyclones over Arabian Sea, hmm. we found, we told, we gave a statement, yes, there is a detectable change in frequency of intense cyclones <coughs> over Arabian Sea, but however, it could be attributed to global warming with low confidence. Huh. So not everything that is happening no. is because of climate change. Yes, there is a study. Globally, there is a study. A statement has been prepared by World Meteorological Organization with input from each uh, country. Also, in our region, also people have studied. What I found that during that period, because of um, the decrease in vehicular population and because of the population moving uh, outside, and activity becoming less <coughs> in the market, industry, etc. The aerosol loading in the atmosphere was quite less. And that aerosol loading in the atmosphere becoming less, so air quality was good. So, because man made things were less, so air quality was good. And therefore, the weather like visibility, what you find the fog, etc., was less. But um, we could not find any such relationship um, influencing the large scale weather like monsoon or um, etc. There could be some study people found that thunderstorms, thunderstorms depends upon the localized aerosols etc. Uh, because there is upward motion and downward motion. So some isolated relationship could be found out. Um, other things what we found that uh, since there was uh, almost uh, nil you can say the aircraft travel, so therefore we could not get data. <laughs> we get lot of data from the aircrafts. We provide forecast to them. No, they, no, they give you back. They <laughs> give us certain data, and these aircraft move at a height of say, say, 10 to 12 to 15 kilometers. 
And uh, during that period, the number of data from that region uh, decreased. And that decreased amount of data influenced the models. <coughs> the model accuracy decreased temporarily at that time. 